what's up? Ken here from Playing Numbers. Today I'm showing you how to simulate NBA game outcomes using Python 3.6. More specifically, I'll be using a Monte Carlo simulation for this analysis. Now, I bet you're wondering what a simulation is. In the most basic terms, a simulation is randomly sampling from a distribution. So if we randomly sample, let's say, from team points here enough times, we'll actually just recreate that distribution somewhere else. By itself, that doesn't really tell us a whole lot. But when we compare one distribution with another distribution, it gives us a surplus. So let's say we're comparing, we're randomly sampling from team points and opponent points. We can determine on our samples what percent of the time team points is actually higher than opponent points. And that tells us a little bit more information. If we're adding another distribution to that or anything like that, it continues to give us more inf information and the mathematical complexity of those problems increases. If we're using simulation, we don't have to worry about the mathematical complexity, we just have to run the simulation more times and we get closer and closer to that limit. So sim simulation is a great way to actually simplify problems and get really, really good results regardless. For this example, I'm going to be using the NBA team game stats from 2014 to 2018 data set from Kaggle. The link will be in the description below. And in our analysis here, I'm going to recreate the NBA finals or actually simulate the NBA finals from the 2017-2018 season where Golden State defeated Cleveland. Now let's just jump straight into the code. So we import these modules. The most important ones here are going to be pandas and the random module from Python. I don't actually use NumPy in this video, but it's used for the more advanced version of this, of this code that I've written on my GitHub playing numbers. For that, I show you, you know, the code is actually flexible enough to simulate all, any of the teams in the data set rather than just this one example. I don't use great programming paradigms here, but I'm doing this code in a certain way to illustrate a point. Now, we also use matplotlib to actually visualize the histograms, which is very, very important in simulation. So we're just gonna read in the data there. Let's take a look at the columns that we're gonna use. So in this analysis, we're only concerned with four columns. The first being the team, so we care about Golden State and Cleveland. The next being the date, we only want the 2017-2018 season because that's going to be most representative of what happened in the finals or what we're trying to estimate what happened in the finals. We're also looking at team points and opponent points. So that's just the number of points a team scores as a distribution and the number of points that are scored against them as a distribution. So right here, we're going to break the, the data into two data frames, one for Golden State and one for Cleveland. This line right here, I just use a Lambda function to filter out all games that are not from the 2017-2018 season. Now let's take our first stab at looking at the actual total point distribution. So in blue, we can see Golden State, the distribution of points, and in orange, we can see Cleveland's distribution of points. It looks like Golden State has a slightly higher average point total per game than Cleveland does here, but both of these distributions appear to be normally distributed, which is exactly what we want in this type of simulation. We look at points against and we see that same rel almost normal distribution, and we also see that Cleveland, it appears, has slightly more points scored against them than Golden State. So now we just tabulate those things into variables. So we take the team point averages and for Cleveland and Golden State and save those into variables. We take the standard deviations, which are also very important. So whenever you make any type of normal distribution, you really only need two things. The first being the mean and the second being the standard deviation. So those are kind of the the magic components for us actually running the, the simulations here. We also look at the mean and standard deviations of the opponent points against. So as you can see, it looks like our quick analysis from the histogram is right. Golden State, in fact, on average, scores slightly more points than Cleveland. 
Now, just as an example, before we get into the simulation code, what we're gonna be doing is randomly sampling again from a specific distribution. So this Gaussian is a normal distribution with a mean of the total number of points that Golden State, I mean, with the average number of points Golden State scores and the standard deviation of that distribution. So if we run it enough times, it should reach a limit of an average of 113. And that appears to be fairly close. It might be a little lower until we run it a certain number of times and we get a very realistic distribution. So with that thought in mind, let's actually look at the first real component of our distribution and our simulation code. So the game sim simulates just one game. And the game sim just runs game sim over and over again and um, tabulates the results of the simulations. It, it just keeps track of what happens in game sim. So for game sim, we want to simulate one, the Golden State score, two, the Cleveland score, and then we compare them. So when we, simu when we simulate a score, we take a sample from that random distribution of Golden State, and we average that with the random distribution of the number of points that Cleveland allows. So in my opinion, that's a fairly good estimator because you're looking at how those teams specifically would match up in terms of how good Golden State's offense is and how good Cleveland's defense is. And we do the exact opposite for Cleveland. We look at how many points, you know, a random sample of from their total points distribution and a random sample from Golden State's defensive distribution. Now we compare those two variables that we created, and if Golden State wins this matchup, we get a one. If Cleveland wins the matchup, we get minus one, and if it's, if it's a tie, which I know can't happen, we get a zero. So I just built ties in here because then we won't have any holes in the data. If you'd like to, you can go forward and create some tie break criteria. Now let's just run a couple example games. So in that scenario, Golden State won. In that scenario, Cleveland won. So you can see that it's not just gonna be one outcome over and over again. Now let's run a couple of actual game simulations. So if we run this 10 times, it appears that Golden State won seven of those 10 and Cleveland won three. Now let's run it 100 times. And the more we run it, the closer to the limit we actually get. So we got, we're at 63%. Let's run it 1,000, we're at 55, 10,000, 55.91. So it looks like we're rounding out right around that 55, 56% number. So if we were to do this analysis in perpetuity, we ran it an infinite number of times, it looks like Golden State would win between 55 and 57% of the time. And that tells us a lot of information. If we were interested in sports betting, for example, we might be able to evaluate if the line is good on a certain night based on what our calculated winning percentage is. We can also use this in fantasy sports. We can use this for all other types of analysis. But again, specifically in sports, simulation can be really, really fun and interesting. If you're so inclined, you can definitely build on this model and add in you know, more features. You can look at specific positions or even at the shot level if you're really, really interested in getting your hands dirty. So hopefully this is a great starting place for a lot of people. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. And if you'd like me to keep producing content or if you like videos like this, please subscribe and I'll try and produce more interesting videos uh, in, of this nature. Thank you so much again and have a great one.